Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Brad Hamilton and today I'm going to be breaking down some of the concepts behind building this explosion utilizing the chaos add-on inside of Blender. This is not a tutorial, but if you apply the concepts explained in this video, you should be able to create some pretty awesome explosion simulations. So here we are inside of Blender, and this is the wonderful preview we have of the explosion we have made inside of Blender 2.81. And as you can see in our scene collection here, we have a bunch of 360 ground burst operators in our scene emitting fuel for our explosion. Let's take a deeper look at what is creating this simulation. So let's select the smoke domain that Chaos has automatically added to our scene here and just go to the physics tab and turn off the preview mode to see what is happening underneath all of the smoke and fire. Alright, so if we zoom in here, what we see is a whole bunch of kind of cone-shaped 360 ground burst operators in the middle of our explosion here. And essentially what we've done here is we've added a bunch of dynamic smoke fire fuel particle systems into our scene around each other to sort of build the fuel system that originally erupts into a blast of fire and smoke. We've also clicked our mix fuel operator on the chaos add-on tab here as well to break up the smoke with some custom turbulence fields. I recommend using this button to add turbulence before baking your simulation if you want detailed bubbles in your smoke and fire. Anyways, let's zoom out here and see these 360 ground bursts underneath our fire. And as you can see, if we scroll through our timeline here, they are creating a custom fuel particle field that is essentially shaping the fire of our explosion. Some of them even go off at different times to add even more variation in the blast for a more unique result. We've also varied the lifetime of certain 360 ground burst emitters and then scaled and rotated them in different ways on the z-axis so that they emit fuel particles either more directly upwards or a more spread out fuel field. In this particular system here, if we click on it and go to the particle tab, we can see that we have 800 particles emitted with a lifetime of 17, which is a pretty long lifetime, making this explosion appear larger in scale in combination with the high domain cube resolution of 332. If we click on this disc shaped 360 ground burst here, which is blasting particles outward along the floor, we can see that we have 1200 particles that spread out outward over their lifetime of 14 frames. And essentially we have added a bunch of slightly different particle systems here to build this blast in kind of a custom way. There's a lot of experimentation, but we made something pretty cool. All right, so to finish off this demonstration, let's go ahead and add one more fuel system to our scene utilizing the chaos add-on here on the right panel. We will go on the timeline when we want to add this new fuel system, and then we will click our 3D cursor where we want the fuel system added to our scene. And then we will just click on the 360 ground burst button here. And as you can see, now another particle system has been added to our scene. And we can scale this one in different directions to change the properties of how the particles are emitted to get a more custom result. If we wanted to add more particles to our scene in that operator, we could increase them under the chaos tab here. But once we've added one of those three operators to our scene, we have to control the particle system through the particle tab here on the right. So let's just go here and increase the number of particles to 1000. And just for fun, let's also increase the lifetime of our particles to 12 to give our fuel a larger scale look. And now as you can see, we have added yet another fuel stream to our scene, which we could bake into our smoke and fire explosion result to add another element. For my domain cube in this specific example, I have increased my resolution divisions to 320 for a larger scale looking simulation and have my high resolution settings at 1 for more detail. I recommend keeping my high resolution checkbox deselected until you find the right amount of resolution divisions for your specific shot and then checking that high resolution setting and adding more detail at the very end for a final bake. Also for this specific example I have decreased the flame reaction speed to 0.04 so that the fuel wouldn't burn out as fast and would give a more fiery result which I think looks pretty cool. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful to understand some of the concepts behind building explosions inside of Blender utilizing the Chaos add-on. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions, and I'll see you guys next time.